In this video, we will be looking at GCSE Physics Topic 2, and that is electricity. Here are some of the subtopics we're going to be looking at throughout this video. And as always, these pages will be available on my Etsy page if you're interested in buying them. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy. First of all, we have circuit symbols. There are 12 circuit symbols here that you need to remember and become very familiar with. The types of questions that can come up in exams can literally ask you to just say what they are and it's easy marks in the test really. So we have a cell, a switch, a switch can be open or closed, a filament lamp which is just a cross that's like a light bulb, a fuse, LED, light emitting diode, resistor, variable resistor with which is just a resistor with an arrow through it, ammeter with a big A, voltmeter with a big V, diode which is very similar to the light emitting diode, the light dependent resistor and then the thermistor. So to be honest a lot of these if you're watching this in year 10 or 11 you've probably seen a lot of these before. Some tips I have on how to remember things are for example the variable resistor and the thermistor look very similar but you just need to remember that the variable one is with an arrow and the thermistor is not. Uh, the ammeter and voltmeter obviously very obvious to remember. A fuse often gets confused with other things like a resistor so a fuse just has a straight line going through it. Light in these symbols is represented by arrows. So if it has arrows on it, such as the LED and the LDR, the best way to remember those is the light is represented by arrows. Next we have current. So current by definition is the flow of electric charge. There's an equation associated with this, which is charge equals current times time. Q equals IT for those of you that prefer to remember it in letter form and again the units which are really important coulombs for charge amps or amperes for current and then time is always in seconds so remember with these equations if ever you have something that isn't those kind of standard units remember to convert them so minutes convert them into seconds that kind of stuff something i've always taught my students with current is an easy way to understand it and how charge and current travels through a circuit Current travels through wires or a circuit via electrons just like cars carry people on a road. So imagine your circuit and your wires are like the roads. The electrons are cars and charge is effectively like a person or people or things in the car. Potential difference or voltage is what drives the electron and pushes it through the circuit just like an engine within that car. And resistance just means that all those electrons have to funnel through a smaller space, just like traffic on a road. So by remembering it in the form of traffic and cars, which is something we're all familiar with in the real world, it makes it much easier to understand what's actually going on here. Next we have resistance, very similar to the last slide. Potential difference equals current times resistance. This is something called Ohm's law, which is a very important thing. You may see it in exams by the name. Just remember this equation when you see Ohm's law. So V equals IR, and again, volts, amps, and resistance is ohms, O-H-M-S. And again, I've written the triangle on the right-hand side. If you're not familiar with the triangle, let me know down below and I will explain it to you. It's an invaluable way of rearranging these equations, which you need to know. And then at the bottom here, resistance can depend on lots of factors in a circuit. So it could be based on the strength of a component such as a resistor. So if you've got a resistor in your circuit, it's going to increase the resistance. But it could also be increased by something like a filament lamp, which could cause slight resistance. And at a slightly higher level, the length and the diameter of a wire can also change the resistance. Again, in real life, imagine it like the traffic and all the cars on the road. If you've got 100 cars that are trying to go through a really long, thin road, it's going to take longer than if you're on a motorway that has like four lanes. So just remember the traffic analogy for remembering everything to do with wires, really. Sensing circuits. So a light dependent resistor is a resistor that depends on light, believe it or not. And a thermistor is a resistor that depends on temperature. So thermistor, thermometer, temperature, that kind of stuff. That's one way to remember those ones. So with both of these, the higher the light intensity or the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance is. 
Now the best way to remember this, rather than remembering those sentences, just remember what the graph looks like. Because as soon as you can remember and replicate that graph, the words will kind of come naturally because you can see on this graph, as the light goes up, the resistance goes down. And likewise for the other one, as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. Two very important things to remember for your exams. Next we have a series and parallel circuits, the differences between them. So you can see at the top left a series circuit is just a single loop and it has all the components on that loop. There are some important facts that you need to remember about this. So the total potential difference is the sum of all the potential difference components in the circuit. So in this case we've only got one cell at the top of the circuit. Let's say that is supplying 3 volts to the circuit. That means that anywhere you measure is going to have 3 volts of potential difference. If there were two cells in there that made up a battery, you would then have 6 volts if they were both 3, because they'd all add up to make 1. The current is the same everywhere, and again that's because those electrons can only go one route around the circuit. So it's going to be the same everywhere. And the total resistance is the sum of all resistances in the circuit. So again that makes sense because all those electrons have to go through the same route, so if there's a blockage somewhere, they're all going to be affected. So it's going to affect the entire circuit. Moving on to parallel circuits, the potential difference is the same everywhere in the circuit this time. So as you can see, this time we have a split in the circuit. So there'll be certain points where the electrons, just like in the real world, can choose which road they go down or which wire they go down. And because of that, the total current is going to be the sum of all the currents in the circuit. The current splits at junctions, and at a technical level, it splits based on the resistance of each of the routes. So at a kind of lower GCSE level, just remember that, imagine you've got all your electrons coming up to a junction, half of them go one way, half of them go the other way. So if you were to measure the current at that point once they've split, you're going to get half the reading that you had before because half of them have gone down the other route. And the slightly more complicated one, if two resistors are in parallel, the total resistance is less than the smallest resistor. So what I mean by that is you can imagine, say you've got 10 electrons that are going down a wire, you've got one route which has a resistor of 10 ohms, and one route that has a resistor of 5 ohms. Now, as I said before, the electrons will split at that junction, and as they split, you might have 5 of those go down the 5 ohm resistor route, and the other 5 might go through the 10 ohm resistor route. Because of this, the 5 ohm resistor route is going to be less kind of traffic or resistance, but because there is only 5 of them that have gone down there, it's not going to be as bad as if all 10 of them would have gone down there. So if you compare it to a series circuit, it is actually less resistance, which is kind of what that point is explaining. So please, if you don't understand it, let me know down below and I can pin a comment and I can help you all out. Electricity in the home. So the plugs are really important that you need to remember for this. So a blue wire, the green and yellow wire, and the red wire. So the red wire is a live wire. That's the one that carries the current, the electricity. The green and yellow wire is an earth wire which will ground the electricity for safety. So if the electrons kind of break out somewhere, then the green and yellow wire will take it down into the ground so people don't get electrocuted effectively. And the blue wire is a neutral wire which simply completes the circuit. Again, we have another equation here. Power equals current times potential difference. P equals IV. Again, another triangle for you to remember. And then finally, in the top left, I've just included this as an example. So... Obviously, when we think of our circuits, when we draw them, we've got like a big loop that goes from the power source to a device and then back round to the power source again. In reality, a lot of our appliances just have a single wire. There's no kind of from the wall into the TV, for example, and then round the other side of the TV back into the power. So what actually happens is all of this is just contained within the wire. So it'll go up one way, through the red wire, into the TV, and then back through the blue wire. So there's none of this big rectangle circuits in real life, really. And then our final slide is the national grid. 
So what is going on here? The power stations produce electricity, and then the aim of the national grid is to get that electricity to the homes that we live in. So to do this, there is three major processes that happen. So a step-up transformer increases the voltage in the wires. Now, the reason we do this is because that reduces the current if we reduce the voltage. And by reducing the current, again, think of it like the traffic with the cars on the road. If we reduce the traffic, that's going to reduce the resistance. And in electricity, if you have a lower resistance, the wires won't get as hot and you won't lose as much power and energy to things like thermal energy sources. So that is why a step-up transformer is here. The step-up transformer will increase the voltage in these wires to about 400 kilovolts or 400,000 volts. So this is why pylons and all the wires through the countryside and stuff are very dangerous, so you should not go near them. Once they have travelled across to where they need to get to, a step-down transformer is used, which reduces the voltage back down to a much safer 230 volts on average, which again will increase the current, but we don't worry too much about that anymore because it doesn't really have to travel far to get to the houses. And then finally the electricity is delivered into the houses so that people can use it. And that sums up the end of topic 2 electricity. The next topic will be particle model of matter. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know down below if you want any more help with this. And like and subscribe for more. I will see you in the next one.